and just reiterating the point that it's not ideal for transaction heavy databases because one key point to remember or to note for column store indexes once you've applied it to a table that table becomes read only so if you are frequently changing that table uh, you would have to typically drop the index load the data and recreate the index or implement some sort of partitioning logic so if you've got a database which is very transaction heavy column indexes is not likely to, to help with that So where in a data warehouse do we think we should apply column store indexes? It's in the fact tables. Because this is, these are the tables where we're expecting large data volumes. Uh, we're expecting uh, our queries to look like star joins. So your fact table will be joining, inner joining, in most cases, to a lot of your dimension tables uh, to make sure yeah, You've got referential integrity, maybe applying filters and things like that. So the column store index is driven towards uh, implementation on, on star schemas and in particular fact tables. In terms of dimension tables, well, that really depends. I think if you've got um, small dimension tables, hundreds, maybe thousands of records, creating a comp a column store index may not necessarily help in terms of that query. If you've got large dimensions, again talking to hundreds of thousands, millions of rows or billions in some cases, yes we can see column store indexes helping there. But I guess the other perspective we should always look at is from, a, from an OLAP view. Uh, if your dimension is small in terms of records but it has a number of different columns, a number of different attributes. The, the query fired from analysis services uh, to pull in this data could be optimized with the column store index. So it's, it's definitely an area worth exploring, but definitely we see benefits on fact tables. Okay, so let's have a quick look then. Uh, prepared a very small demo. Hopefully it will illustrate how easy uh, I expect the column store index to work and to set up. So what I've got here are two queries. They're identical. You can see. I'm not lying. I promise. Um, and what I've done is you can see here that the query on the left hand side is avoiding using the column store index that I've created by this with hint. So what I'm telling it to do is to don't rely on the on the optimizer to select the column store index. Use this particular index instead. So if we look at our table here on the left, you can see I've got the column store index and I've got a more traditional non-clustered index set up here as well. So it's a very typical query I've got here. Uh, it's uh, a fact table with joins onto a handful of dimension tables. We've got joins and filters being applied. We've got a group by, a sum, and some aggregation happening here. You can see here that the size of the fact table that I've populated is around 2 million rows. So what I'm going to do is just run this query. God willing it won't fail. <laughs> there we go. So it's expecting this query when I did it um, earlier. It took about 20 seconds. There we are. So approximately 22 seconds to run this query uh, when not using the column store index. Now I'm going to run the exact same query. So I've made no modifications to the query. I am now relying 
on the optimizer to select the column store index and I'm just going to run this there we go so the same query on the same database uh, came back within seven seconds same number of rows as well and all I've done literally is just created the column store index on the fact table. I've not done any further optimization anywhere else. That's all I've done. So you can immediately see that if you were to at some point upgrade to uh, SQL Server 2012, the effort involved in, in, in bringing some performance gains is pretty minimal. All you have to do is create this index on your fact table uh, and it should immediately shave some time off uh, your querying times. So if I just show you how to create the index itself, so you can see here it's traditional T-SQL. Create non-clustered columns or index. I guess one that's one point to note, which hopefully I'll be covering later as well, that currently the column store index is non-clustered. It is not, uh, it, you cannot create a clustered non-column uh, store index. So what we'll do, I'll just drop it initially. Dropped. It's gone. Let's just rerun the create script. Should take a few seconds. Now, one thing to note, um, I mean, I'm, I'm running this on CTP3. During sort of preparation for this demo, when I was creating this index, on some instances, uh, there was an error message that I got, which was related to uh, not able to allocate enough memory. Now I think that's possibly because it's still CTP at the moment or the version that I'm running on. Um, but what's actually happening is in terms of building this index it's actually loading the information into memory first before it can complete the index. So during uh, if you're playing around with the CTP at your end and if you uh, run into that issue try uh, what I did was just to restart the SQL Server service uh, make sure there was enough memory available uh, and, and then just rerun the script and it worked fine. So it's just something to keep keep in mind. So you can see there it took about 21 seconds or so to create that index. So it's as simple as that. Uh, you can of course um, create the index through Management Studio Wizard here or sorry pop-up box here as well. You can add and remove columns. So Again, the, the learning curve is very small here. Okay, so that's a very quick demo of the column store index. So how is this actually structured in the background uh, or what's happening behind the covers? The column store index stores each column in a separate set of disk pages. So rather than storing multiple rows per page as data tradi traditionally has been stored, it's each column is being allocated a page. So before we use the term row store to describe either a heap or a B tree that contains multiple rows per, per page. So at the top there you can see it's just a very simple illustration that each page having or containing all of the columns for, for, for the row or a, a group of rows and how that's been pivoted now so that each page is allocated a column. So when you're querying, the pages related to the column in the query are requested. Therefore only relevant data is ever returned into memory and with the innovative VertiPak compression, it helps reduce the data requested and stored in memory. So those familiar with PowerPivot and the BISM tabular model will already know about VertiPak. Uh, you can see data compression uh, from 4 to 1 to 15 to 1 in terms of comp compression on some data types. So 
you've got compressed data, uh, you're only retrieving the relevant pages uh, from storage and into memory. So you can see under the covers at this sort of you know, high level why there is this performance benefit. And of course, I guess another point uh, to make is that there's a new query execution method as part of uh, the column store index, which is the batch mode execution. So instead of uh, processing per row, we're able to, or the technology is able to handle rows in batches, therefore reducing the overhead, and again, bringing that additional benefit in terms of querying times. So the query optimization, what's happening? So SQL Server is still using the cost-based optimizer to choose the best execution or access mode. Um, what we saw earlier in the demo was SQL Server choosing the uh, column store index uh, to run the query when I didn't provide the hint because it knew that that would return the query in the most optimal time. With the, with the hint, I was able to override that. So the optimizer will still look to choose the index, as I mentioned. It will determine whether to use the traditional non-clustered index or the column store index, again, based on its own cost base analysis. And it will also determine whether to use the batch or row mode execution. So to get the best querying performance, your target should be, uh, when executing a query, to make sure that the column store index is being hit and that the execution mode is in batch mode. And you can see this by looking at the um, execution plan of the query. So those are the two key things to look out for. Column store index being hit and it's being executed in batch mode. There are some restrictions currently uh, with column store index. It is key to remember that this is the first version of this feature. There are some unsupported data types. So decimals that are greater than 18 digits, binary data, uh, bar char or n bar char max, uh, and date and time types greater than eight bytes. Now, again, I mean, looking at this, you may think, well, hold on a second, you know, I typically use these in, in my database. But again, going back to the point that the column store index is ideally for fact tables and potentially dimension tables, how many fact tables would you have that would be using these data types? You would have decimals for, I guess, measures, um, I can't imagine you'll have uh, dimension keys that are decimals, but um, you know, that, so that's the only one I could see that could potentially have some impact on you. Uh, you may have some uh, unique identifiers in your fact table. The rest of them I, I don't believe will, will impact you, but these are some of the restrictions uh, in terms of data types that are supported with column store indexes. The query performance restrictions, you can see there, um, outer joins and unions will not uh, run in batch mode. Um, it's, as I said, to get the best out of column store, you need to be aiming to hit the column store index and running in batch mode, but if you introduce an outer join, or union in your query, it will not run in batch mode. So what you would typically try and do is to modify your queries to ensure you get that batch mode execution. So that's probably the effort, I would say, if you were to do a migration, that would be uh, the effort that you may want to spend some time on, is to make sure that you can 
um, find workarounds for any outer joins or unions that you have in your queries.